Welcome everyone to another episode of How To Get Good. Now today we're going to be going over skills, how you unlock them, how many you can get, where they come from, all that good stuff. And of course, it helps to know how to actually plan ahead if you're making a new character in terms of which skills you want and which ones you don't. Because some people do end up leveling stuff they don't really need, or people sometimes level up a particular skill line that they weren't intending on leveling up and wondered how they did it. Now, if you're very experienced, of course, you know this already, so there's no point you watching, but if you're not, then this will help. Now, every single class in the game has three major skill lines that are completely separate from each other, but obviously unique to the class. Generally, each skill line has its own kind of area, one being mostly damage, the other being kind of tanky and control-based abilities, and the other being somewhat either control healing or both and sometimes damage kind of sneaks into there as well so they're not set in stone as such but you can generalize around each class that there's usually a damage line a healing line and a tank line if you prefer to look at it that plain and simple but obviously it's not that way for everything um there are some that cross over for example this particular skill actually does damage but if you morph it the other way it does a heal and same for this but it still falls into this healing category this one is a damage shield which comes into the protective or support role of it but it increases your healing done we're not going to go too uh stressful into these particular abilities because this is not important in this particular video but i'm just underlining how that can be translated so there are protection and healy type areas tanky areas and damage areas for every single class now how do you go about leveling these up and upgrading them and all the rest of it so first of all every single skill has a particular level of the skill line if you look at my bottom right hand corner it says level 50 you start at level one of course in each skill line but pretty much as you hit the tutorial it goes straight through there really really quickly each individual skill is unlocked at a said level. If you highlight it yourself, you will see which level you will require to unlock the next one. But how do you get that level up? It's not your character level, it's your skill line level. What you need to do is you need to put these on your bar. If an ability from this skill line is on your bar while you gain XP, it will level up the ability because there are several different levels to each ability and then you can morph it into something else. But at the same time, it will level up the skill line. So, the more of these abilities, for example, if I want to level up Ardent Flame, I'll put the whip on my bar, I'll put this on my bar, and I'll put maybe this on my bar. And you can see I've got three skills from the same skill line. Now that will make sure that the XP is distributed quite evenly and I'll level that skill line up quite quickly. But if I'm on the back bar and I gain XP, I won't level up the skill line. So, when you start out with a newer character, you want to play smart. You want to try and unlock all three of your class passives and bonuses and, and skills as soon as possible. And the very simple way to do that is to make sure, even if you're just a one bar character for now, you're only low level, you have one of each skill on your bar. Even if you don't use it, it's not a problem. Just put them on your bar. So, for example, we'll have... Molten Whip from Ardent Flame, we'll have Hardened Armor from Draconic Power, and we'll have Stone Giant from Earth and Heart. That's three abilities, all from different skill lines. All three of those will level evenly. Now, if you increase any of these by plus one or plus two or whatever, obviously that skill line will go up faster than the others. You can also do this with your ultimates as well. So if you aren't using any particular abilities, but you do actually have an ultimate, you could just have this ultimate on the bar, and I wouldn't need this. Although for having two, I do benefit a bit more. Now, when it comes to weapon skills and armor skills, these are slightly different in that they have an extra bonus to them. So, first of all, if you want to use any type of weapon, what you need to do is unlock it. To unlock it, all you do is equip the weapon type and get a kill. Any kill. It could be a small, tiny, tiny enemy, maybe just a zombie, and the skill line will unlock. So if you don't have two-hander skill, for example, but you're holding one and you're wondering where all the skills are, that's where they are. You need to kill something first. And that's for every single one of these, including sword and board. One hand and shield for those that don't know what that is. Now, these passives and such I'm going to go over in a separate video. Of course, I'm not going to go into passives today. That's 
That's a very long one and that's important, but today we're just going to look at how you unlock the skills. Now, just like the class skills, where you can put them on your bar, you can do this with the weapon skills as well. So, if we go for Rally, for example, you'll notice that this is on my bar. You'll also notice that Reverse Slice is on my bar. So, I've got two skills here for my two-hander. So, any kills I get on this bar or any experience points from quests or anything will level up that skill line, contributing via two abilities. But, also... You don't have to have any weapon skills on to level up the weapon if you're holding it. So if you do actually have the weapon visible, so you're using it right now on this bar, any experience points I get will contribute to that weapon skill line. However, the abilities will add to that. So if I go to my back bar, for example, right now, any XP I'm getting goes towards the bow and the skills on the bar. Swap again, anything goes towards the two-hander. So if you do want to level up your bow, you need to be on your bow bar. Again, there is a trick to that. So, that's very straightforward. Bow, level up the bow. Two-hander, level up the two-hander. Works for any weapon. But what you can do is you can cheat it. So, if you have unlocked the bow, but you don't use it actively enough to generate enough XP and you're finding it's a real struggle you you're leveling your two-hander like hell because you're always using it but your bow's just not going up what you can do is you can grab one of these skills and put it on your bar now you'll notice that my skill is actually grayed out once I get aggro or something there you go so I do have skills that I can use but my bow ability is grayed out why is that that is because this is not a bow and you can't use it so I can't activate that ability on this bar. However, while it's there, that is a bow skill from the bow skill line on my bar I'm gaining XP from. So even though I'm not holding it, I'm place holding this skill and I can level up my skill line by doing so. So if you are leveling up perhaps and you don't really need too many skills because you're in a situation where things are dying really, really quickly, you can get away with maybe just a spammable and an execute. You could just fill your bar with abilities that you're not using from any skill line you like and actively level it up. So here, I've just put three bow skills on. I can't use any of them because of my weapon type that I'm holding, but I will gain XP for the equivalent of three skills worth. So it's a really fast way to level up your abilities. Just run in, get involved, hand in whatever quests you can on that particular bar, and not only will you level up the two-hander, your class abilities, but you'll also level up another weapon at the same time. Now that's just a quick way of getting what you need. For example, if you needed poison arrow or poison injection and it's taken forever and you keep trying to kill stuff on the bow bar, you don't have to. You can just put it on the front and you can get it that way. It's much, much easier to level up your skills while you're taking part of the most XP you can possibly get rather than trying to gauge every single fight and going, ah, oh, I've got to be on my bow now while everything dies because that can be a pain. Or you run up to go and hand in an undaunted quest and you hand it in real quickly and you're like, oh shit, I wasn't on my bow bar. That happens a lot. So play smart with your leveling of your skills and just make sure that one of the weapons or class abilities or weapon abilities are on your bar while gaining XP. Now, when it comes to passives and such, obviously they're very important, but we won't, like I said, do those right now. We'll do them in a separate video because it's quite in depth, but we will go into armor. Armor is the same as weapons. So in that respect, basically you have to get a kill for opening up the skill line for weapons. There is a condition for armor also. It's not get a kill, but it, there is a condition. To unlock the armor passive, you need to wear three pieces of its kind. Now, you don't have to keep them on. You don't have to get any XP whatsoever, but you do have to equip three pieces. So if you want to take advantage of the passives, or the active, in fact, in the light armor, medium armor, or heavy armor, you must equip three of its types. So if you want the light armor passive, put three pieces on, take them off again. If you want the medium armor, put three pieces on, take it off again. And same for heavy armor. Whatever you decide to do with your character is absolutely fine. But just for the sake of unlocking the skills, that's what you need to do. Now, if you are using a said type of armor, each piece worn will contribute towards the amount of XP you get towards the skill line. So if you're wearing all light armor, your skill line is going to level very, very quickly. If you wear all medium, same applies, and all heavy, same applies. If you wear a balance of them, you'll level them all up together. 
the more pieces obviously the higher the skill line will go up faster um but this involves you being in combat you have to get hit so while you're in combat all you need to do is just play the game and these are passive as hell they'll go up very very fast but just remember if you don't have any particular type on you won't level the line now there are some other areas in the game including guilds and such like that where there are other skill lines to unlock we can go over those briefly uh legend of main for example is more for pickpocketing stealing thievery all that kind of stuff this is base game as well this has many different areas where you can unlock it but to start with all you really need to do is interact with the skill style so this is breaking locks pickpocket and that kind of stuff if you do any of those acts this one unlock so as soon as you find a treasure chest try and pick the lock the skill line will open up or if you try and pickpocket someone the skill line will open up anything like that or even steal now to improve this keep doing that stuff the more pickpocketing you do the more stealing you do the more opening chests you do and the more selling to fences that you do will increase this so even if you've got something that's very very low value that you've been stealing that counters an extra sale to the fence in the thieves guild and that will actually level up this skill line so steal 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 sell 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 if you open treasure chests you'll get a thousand xp towards this skill line which is obviously great for the passives but do not break locks if you break a lock as in force break with a lock pick you will actually get no XP towards this skill line. So that's great for later on once you've unlocked the skill line to maximum and you can just pop locks left, right, and center. But if you haven't got it maxed yet, don't pop locks until it is maximum. Soul Magic, very simple. You unlock this at the beginning of the game. You don't even need to do anything. However, to progress it, you do need to do the main quest. This is not as simple as just killing stuff and getting XP. You have to do the main quest. Vampire is getting a rework this year. So we don't know what's coming with that. But to level up Vampire, you just need to be a Vampire. You don't need to put skills on your bar. You just need to be in combat. And the more XP you get, or in fact, even handing quests, the more XP you get, obviously, the sooner this will level up. Now, you've got some guild stuff here. These are all associated with their, their types of guilds. So they do have their own rules, especially when it comes to Dark Brotherhood, um, Sigic Order and Thieves Guild. They all have their own quest lines. And the more you do the quests the further you'll go along the skill line and you'll unlock better stuff. However, Mages Guild and Fighters Guild and also Undaunted are very different. So Mages Guild requires, obviously there's some XP to get from the quests, but this requires lore book hunting. The more lore books you get, the higher your XP, then each level will unlock, unlock, unlock. There are around sort of 210 to 240 lore books required to unlock the skill line, depending on which sets you complete. But in order to find all those, I mean, you can use add-ons on PC or you can even use Google or just hunt them down old school, which is fine. But if you go into law books, law libraries, what you're looking for is this kind of stuff here. Shalador's library. So I'm missing one in Alaka Desert, apparently. Um, these here, if you complete the sets of 10 or however big the sets are, you'll get a bonus XP towards your skill line itself. So... Just bear that in mind. If you are hunting law books, make sure that you finish sets in certain zones and you'll get a boost. Fighters Guild, all you need to do for this is kill undead, daedra, or werewolves. And that will level up the skill line so you can obviously progress through this one. Just bear in mind, of course, the Mages Guild, Fighters Guild, Sigic Order, Thieves Guild, all this kind of stuff. You do have to speak to an NPC to actually unlock this skill line first of all. Now, if you go into Oridon, for example, I'm not going to do this for every single location. I'll just explain in a, in a main starter zone that I often use. So if you go to Volkal Guard, you have the Fighters Guild um, area over here. Where is it gone? There you go. And then there's the Mages Guild here and Undaunted here. Those are your three base guild types that you need to really focus on. So as soon as you make a new character, speak to Torok Redcores in there. Speak to the Mages Guild guy in there, and then speak to the Fighters Guild person in there. Just bear in mind, of course, in this building is also your crafting uh, starting skill lines. So you can do a quick mission for your crafting. They are already there as soon as you start interacting with stuff, but these will unlock your writs. So just bear that in mind. There's a character in there in a black apron. Make sure you speak to her. Undaunted, the more dungeon achievements you get, and some trial achievements... 
the further this will go. This is a passive, very easy to unlock skill line as long as you're just playing the game. At level 45, you will unlock pledges. Pledges are quite simple. Uh, every single day, there's three pledges from three different members of the Undaunted Enclave. Now, if we just show you an example, there's one in each alliance area, but we'll show you the Gratwood one for a start. If you just come into the main Elden Root area, you'll come out of the main uh, trade hub, if you like. Actually, this way. This is where all the guild traders are. Down the hill, and it's here. These guys, there's four actually, but three of them are for the daily pledges. Once you get level 45, you get a letter in the mail. You can go here and pick up your pledges. These contribute to your skill line as well. So, you can get dungeon achievements, you can complete pledges, and there's a daily guy there as well. He's the fourth one. He gives you a daily undaunted kind of quest. These pledges change every single day. There'll be a base game version 1 dungeon, there'll be a base game version 2 dungeon, or it could be one of the more neutral ones that don't have a 1 or 2, and then the other one is a DLC. I won't go into the pledges as to what you do and don't get, but they do contribute to your undaunted skill line if you hand them in, if you complete them. Now, the easiest way, in my opinion, to get this stuff done is, first of all, go through the dungeons at your own pace. You don't have to be in a hurry, but go for the speed runs and the no deaths, if you can, or the hard modes. The completion will give you undaunted experience points. The speed run will also give you an achievement. The hard mode will, and the no death will as well. I know no death can be a pain in the butt, especially if you're trying to do the DLC stuff. So don't panic. You don't have to have it. If you go through every single dungeon, complete it on veteran difficulty, at 160 champion points and onwards, I would recommend, just in case you get some shiny loot. You don't want to out-level stuff. If you do every single dungeon just once, you speed run it, and you do the hard mode, you'll have more than enough XP to actually max out to 9 at least. 10 is a bonus because it's got a title, but 9 is what you need for the overall passives. So again, dungeon spamming. Also, there's a couple in Trials. If you get Trials Blocker, Trials Healer, and Trials Damage Dealer, or whatever it is, that will also contribute. Now, Assault and Support are very straightforward. All you need to do is go to Cyrodiil to unlock these. And this is at level 10. When you get to level 10, you can go to Cyrodiil, and there will be a quest person in your alliance area wherever your alliance actually is could be here here or here and they're basically going to put you in for training now there is a quest you can do there. it'll teach you about war machines and all that good stuff but you don't have to do that if you don't want to you can just go up to the general and say hey i already know everything once you've done that quest whether it's handed in and saying i know it all or whether you've gone to actually practice with certain things doesn't matter you will actually unlock the support and assault skill lines and two levels of alliance um, upgrades. So you've got alliance points, which is a separate bar for XP, if you like. Now, different levels of alliance points will actually unlock these all the way up to 10. So we'll briefly go into this. If you go into campaigns, this is where you can see your alliance rank for this particular character. Every single character has got their own individual one. This green bar goes up when you get alliance points. And through the ranks, each upgrade will contribute towards your assault and support they're not exactly the same it doesn't mean 10 in alliance points is 10 in assault and support it just contributes towards it on a separate scale so that's how you get them you must get alliance points so you get kills you take keeps you take uh resources in cyrodiil you kill people in imperial city or the sewers you kill people in battlegrounds that by the way is extremely important if you want to unlock the assault and support skills themselves faster and you're not too good in Cyrodiil or you just don't like PvP in general go into Battlegrounds because even if you lose you will still get 7k alliance points guaranteed alliance points for losing what can be better than that you can't fail so got a few more racial passives very simple these unlock as you level up this is the one skill that is dedicated to your level there's 50 levels of orc because there's 50 levels for you so every single level will contribute to this. Now the crafting skill lines are quite simple. You make stuff or you deconstruct stuff. So if you've got something that is a physical item that can be squashed and you squash it, you'll get XP. If you've got something that can be made and you can't do squashing because it's a skill line that doesn't allow it, then you just need to make stuff. Simple as that. So alchemy, enchanting. Actually, no, you can get away with that one. So alchemy and provisioning require you to just make things. So you'll need recipes for that, of course. And... Woodworking, jewelry crafting, enchanting, clothing, and blacksmithing all require you to either make or break something. 
Just bear in mind, by the way, the level of the item you break determines how much XP you get. And if you break something that somebody else made you, you get more XP. So you, if you've got a nice friend or so that might make a few items for you to deconstruct, that can help. So, um, I think that pretty much covers how you unlock the skills, how you level them, and where they kind of come from. But something that you will need to notice is that every single skill can not only be unlocked, but they can be morphed into a certain area as well. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do a quick... Um, demonstration of what that looks like. Now, every single skill in the game has two versions of it after the base version. So technically three, including ultimates. Passives are different, they're set in stone, but all abilities have a base and then two choices. What you choose is entirely up to you, depends on what you need it for, depends on what your build is doing, all that good stuff. But there are options. I know people panic when they first get their skill points and think, oh, I've spent it. Now I've got none left, what am I going to do? Well, maybe you don't want one of those skills. You can change that. You can change it at any time. Yeah, it's going to cost you a bit of gold, but you can do it. Also, you may want to know where the skill points actually come from while you're leveling. So, we did miss that at the beginning, but basically, while you level, every one level, you will get a skill point. Every five levels, you will get two. And every ten levels, you will get three. So, one through to four is a point each. Level 5 is 2. 6 through to 9 is a point each. 10 is 3 points. Then you start again. So once you've leveled from 1 to 50, you'll actually have 65 skill points to spend. If you look for sky shards in the overland, every single sky shard that you get contributes towards new skills. So 3 sky shards equals 1 skill. In Cyrodiil or PvP, your alliance points rank. Every single alliance points rank you get up to 50 will give you a skill point as well every dungeon will give you a skill point every group delve or public dungeon if you want to call it that um has an event and that will get you a skill point as well and some quests will there's lots and lots of different ways to get skill points but essentially your most basic ones are level 1 to 50 you'll get 65 points to spend now morphing go to this little shrine here this is in gratwood by the way um there's this one in each alliance area but we'll show gratwood for the sake of the video just on the right here when you get to Elden Root. Now, click on this shrine. You can reset every single skill you want. You can do these individually, by the way. You don't pay 19k straight out. That's only if you've got millions of skill points. Don't worry. If you're quite new, that's going to be really, really cheap. Or you can change a specific morph of abilities or multiples. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the basics of a skill. So we'll set this one back to, to zero. So this one starts off with an effect. And when you level it up to level four and then max it out that whole bar you can then morph it to two different versions. Some abilities have a stamina version and a magical version. This one is more for stamina DPS. It does damage over time and gets progressively stronger. This one is for more mag DPS where it does flame damage and then heals you for the damage done. They're very different. Similar applications, but different types of effects. Not all of them are as straightforward as this. Some of them are quite drastic in their changes, but what you choose is entirely up to you. It's actually your choice. You make characters however you want. Every single skill in the game, I'll stress this again, every single skill has this system. So all skills from your class, your weapons, your armor if they're active, and your ultimate as well. As you can see here, I can choose from the base ultimate or two morphs of it. You will have to level the skill before you can unlock the morph, and it does mean you need two skill points per skill. Now, hopefully that wasn't too confusing. But just to recap, since we're at the end of the video, weapon skills are unlocked by holding weapon abilities on your bar while gaining XP or physically holding the weapon while gaining XP. Class abilities are leveled up via having those class skills on your bar while getting XP. And the guild abilities are all unique to their own skill lines, whether it be quests or kill types. Crafting, however, has its own rules. Create or squash. So, hopefully that helped. Hopefully that wasn't too boring. Um, hopefully that made a few people, especially newer players, understand how the structure of the skill system actually works. But you will have to mess around with it. You will have to customize things yourself and see what you actually like. There's no right or wrong way about it. And you can always change it if you want to. So, 
First of all, thank you very much for watching. I hugely appreciate the support. And if you are not subscribing, of course, on YouTube, please do hit that button. It is free. And don't forget to hit the notification bell as well so you know when I upload a video. Also, if you'd like to support outside the channel, there are some links in the info section for Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, and of course the website zynodegaming.com, where all the written guides are, and these how to get good guides will be up there as well. Also, one more thing before you go, hit the join button, see if there's anything you like. There is a membership on YouTube where you get emotes and shinies when it comes to live premieres, and comment sections as well. You can actually show off your badges, so if that interests you, there's a button there for you as well. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.